Oh, the Houston Texans. In some ways, when I look at them as an organization, I view them very much as an exercise in futility. I really do. You've got the best defensive player in the entire world in J.J. Watt on your defense, and yet you're not a playoff team. You've got an offensive-minded head coach and a Bill O'Brien, yet your offense is kind of middle of the road, frankly, if we're being honest. When I look at them, the single biggest reason they are an exercise in futility is because of their inability to ever effectively address the quarterback position via the NFL draft. Make no mistake about it, to contend for a championship in today's NFL, as I've said so often before and will continue to repeat, especially for those certain organizations like the Houston Texans, just like my Chicago Bears, who clearly do not get or understand this, the simple fact of the matter is, if you are in the business, you would think you would be in the business to want to contend and win a championship, you have to know that you have to draft your franchise quarterback. You can't trade for him. You can't sit there and bring him in via free agency. You can't get him off of the scrap heap. While every once in a while there's that aberration in today's NFL of, let's say, a Drew Brees, that's a Drew Brees and how many Drew Breeses are freaking out there. Championship teams and consistent championship contenders draft and develop their own franchise quarterback. This is something the Houston Texans just cannot fathom. Last year it was rolling with Ryan Fitzpatrick. This year it's going to be either Brian Hoyer or Ryan Mallon. Um, we could talk about the Texans and their draft performance and their picks and this and that and every fucking thing else, but until they effectively address the quarterback position by drafting a young quarterback and developing him into that franchise guy, it's all a waste of time and motion. It's an exercise in futility because you're talking about a team that even if they get to a certain point won't be able to get past a certain point because of what they lack at the quarterback position. And in particular, when you're talking about a team that is now in a division that faces an Andrew Luck twice a year, now will be a Marcus Mariota twice a year, and potentially, you know, as well, a Blake Bortles twice a year. These are all teams that have drafted their young franchise quarterback, if you will. We know what Luck is. We still have yet to see what Bortles and Mariota will develop into. But here are the Houston Texans going in an entirely different way, where these three teams are going to be clearly built around the offensive side of the ball. The Texans are trying to be contrarian and different, which I understand to a degree. They want to be able to stop these teams. They want to be a defense-first organization. I get it, and I understand it to a degree. However, the Texans have been down this freaking road before. When it was Peyton Manning for the Indianapolis Colts at quarterback, they were spending all these first-round picks on defensive linemen like Travis Johnson and fucking who else am I forgetting? I think Jason Babin and then, of course, Mario Williams. And what the hell did that get him at the end of the day? It didn't get him any damn more because they didn't have a fucking quarterback. And even when they had somebody like a Matt Schaub, they only got to a certain level. Why? Because they had a Matt Schaub. They got somebody else's retread at quarterback, basically. They didn't draft and develop their own young franchise guy. So we could sit there and talk about who they picked and how they did and all this shit, but at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. It just doesn't. And you look at last year's draft, an exercise in pure stupidity from the Houston Texans. You're sitting there at number one overall. You don't take the best player in the draft. You don't even take the best defensive player in the draft. You don't even take the best 3-4 edge rushing defensive player in the draft, which clearly in my mind would have been Khalil Mack and was clearly in my mind a year ago. You take Jadavion Clowney. The Texans get exactly what the fuck they deserve. And then instead of maybe later on in the first round trying to trade back up and get a guy like Bridgewater, who surprisingly to me is still on the board, you sit there and stay put with the first pick of round two and take a Xavier Sulafilo because we want to establish a physical identity on both sides of the ball. How the hell has that worked out for you? And before the Texans had sit there and try to praise this organization, talk about the glories of everything they did in 2014, this was a team that took advantage of a very soft-ass last-place schedule playing in an AFC South where they got the benefit of playing the Titans and the Jaguars' sorry asses twice a year and still failed to reach the freaking playoffs. Why? In part because of their failures at the quarterback position. And then to compound matters now, Andre Johnson's gone. The best player in the history of your organization. He's going to Canton someday. And yes, he'll be going to Canton as a Houston Texan. But for, for people talking about, you know, that he regressed or that he took a step back in 2014, okay, he might have, but he's still a pretty damn good player. Those type of players just don't grow on trees. 
And we're talking about again here for the Houston Texans. You have brought in an offensive-minded head coach. So now for the second straight draft with him as the head coach, you have focused primarily on the defensive side of the ball. Why? Because that's what stupid fucking organizations and stupid fucking general managers do. Like you look at their draft. You're talking about strength to strength. When you go defense the first two rounds with Kevin Johnson, the corner from Wake Forest, and Bernardrick McKinney, the inside linebacker from Mississippi State. You know, you brought in an offensive-minded head coach who would think at some point in time you would want to, oh, I don't know, address the uh, offensive line, maybe get a better option at tight end, maybe get another option or two at wide receiver in the first two rounds, you know, maybe address fucking quarterback. You would think, no, oh, not the Texans. Let's just draft more defense. Maybe we could convert Clowney to fucking play in a read option quarterback. Jesus Christ. At least they were able to get a guy that could potentially at least fill one of the shoes of Andre Johnson at some point in time in Jalen Strong out of Arizona State in round number three. You know, you look at this Texas organization, and this is a team to me that makes it clear to understand why they've only made two playoff appearances in 13 seasons of existence. Is because they do certain stupid things and then continuously repeat the same stupid things and expect the results to be any different. Now, with that said, and I've gone on my own little tangent and rant somewhat about the Texans, I will say this. Kevin Johnson made quite a bit of sense for them at number 16. Now, you pair him with a Kareem Jackson, a former first-round pick at corner. You have a nice tandem at corner uh, for the future long term. Now, when you're talking about having to match up with a team like, let's say, the Indianapolis Colts, with what they've got at wide receiver, the Tennessee Titans and some of the young options they have at wide receiver, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the young options they have at wide receiver, it makes sense to want to be able to match up with them and, you know, add to your secondary. That makes sense. I look at Bernardrick McKinney, and I think he makes a world of sense for them in the role that he's going to play inside in the 3-4 because inside backer was a huge need with or without Brian Cushing being injured. Regardless, didn't matter. Um, McKinney might have been a bit high at that point in the middle of round number two, and the fact the Texans traded up to go get him surprised me a little bit. But again, looking at the systematic fit, it made sense for the Texans more than it did a lot of other teams. And then when I look at Jalen Strong, yes, they traded up again to go get him in round number three, but you're talking about Jalen Strong, a guy that was a borderline late first-round talent. He's sitting there in round number three. You've got to go get him. Now you pair him with DeAndre Hopkins. You've got a nice young one-two combination outside at wide receiver, two kind of similar guys. I like the fact that the Texans weren't afraid to go move up and go get guys like McKinney and Strong. They're there, they fit, they represent good values for you and what you're going to envision for them at the NFL level, and you went and got them. That makes sense. But again, I look at the Texans, and they didn't address quarterback. Now, were they really in a position to maybe be able to address quarterback in this draft? I don't particularly know. You know that's not necessarily... The for sure, you know, they did do some things. They addressed some areas of need. You know, I'm not always a guy that believes in just purely need-based drafting, that's for sure. But I will say the Texans did address some of their biggest needs in this draft, and I thought they got some good players to fill some of those needs. It's just at the end of the day, it's not going to matter until they get a fucking quarterback and a quarterback that they draft and develop. And let's not go down the Tom Savage route. And I look at this class, and it was pretty much just a three-player draft, which is probably better than what their 2014 draft is going to end up being. You know, I think Johnson will be a quality starter for them. I think McKinney will be a quality starter for them. And I think Jalen Strong will be a quality starter for them. Uh, will one of those other guys like a Covington or a Hilliard end up playing some type of role? They could, perhaps. But this is a Texans team uh, that, frankly, I thought needed to do more in this draft than they did. Like I said, there are parts about it I like, but at the end of the day, it's an exercise in futility and it really doesn't fucking matter. I think overall they did much better in this draft. Looking back now compared to what they did in 2014, I gave the Texans a grade of a C plus. Because again, it's a three-player draft. I like the three players that they got for what they got them for and where they got them at. But again, is it really going to matter at the end of the day?